A good Wednesday morning to you all. I'm Scott Belfort, joined as always by the best co-host in the biz, Adam Mack. This is The Walk-Off, and today's episode is brought to you by BetStamp. They, of course, are an aggregator of betting sites, so you're going to be able to go on to BetStamp and check out which sites are going to give you the best odds. So if you're going to place a bet, you might as well make as much as you can off of it. Uh, When you sign up for BetStamp, please use the code WALKOFF. It's very helpful to the channel and, of course, bet responsibly. All right, let's get into this because there was finally a trade made just last night. Hunter Renfro going from the Milwaukee Brewers over to the Los Angeles Angels. I love this move for the Angels, adding a little bit of pop into their lineup because really I know everyone says, well, they need pitching. They need pitching. But if you look at what happened last year, man, pretty much after Trout and Otani, that team didn't hit. So adding a little bit of depth when it comes to the ability to hit the ball out of the park, hit the ball around the field, Hunter Hunter Renfro is going to do just that. Okay. So going the other way was Jansen Junk. He but, made his by the way, love love the name. Yeah, I, I can't tell if it's a great name for a pitcher or a terrible name for a pitcher. <laughs> oh, that guy's junk, right? I don't know. Old the Jansen junk. junk. Jansen junk. So junk played a little bit and he made his debut with the Angels last year. He's got he's an interesting pitching prospect. Mm-hmm. Um he could could, of course, right? That's the prospect mm-hmm. term everyone is used to. Could Turn into a starting pitcher. Uh, Elvis Peguero also went in the deal. He played 17 innings in the bigs for the Angels last year. Uh, He's out of the bullpen. And then Adam Seminaris, who is a minor league prospect in triple A. All pitchers. I know I saw some stuff online too. Why are the Angels trading pitchers? Well, because... Sometimes the Angels feel like it's a nine-year-old running a video game. And I think we'll all remember we'll all remember the 2021 draft fiasco where they're like, we're only drafting pitchers, 25 <laughs> rounds of pitchers. So, of course, that's what's in their minor league system, and that's what's going to the Brewers. Uh, Brewers are shedding salary, dude. I think this is becoming pretty apparent. Yep. Yeah, it does seem that way. I mean, Getting you don't hate her last year. I, exactly. You don't trade Josh Hader at the trade deadline. And I know that they said all of the right things. The lip service was there. We're still trying to make the playoffs. We're still competing. But it, writing was on the wall when the Brewers traded Hader that unless some miracle happened, they were pretty much bowing out of that playoff race. Even with the stud that is Devin Williams at the back end of that bullpen. And it does make sense for them to move on from Hater because they are such a small market team and money does matter in Milwaukee. But when they did, it was odd. However, they did get quite a haul back for him. So let's get into the Brewers a little bit. Number one, this Renfro trade honestly made me feel substantially better about the Teoscar Hernandez trade. Both okay. players profile very similarly. Like, listen, I'm well aware Teoscar is probably the better hitter. Okay. His batted ball profile looks better. Renfro though, doesn't hit near as many ground balls as Teoscar. And he actually can pull the ball, the fastball, right? He doesn't have to just drop it into the other opposite field. So that's, Renfro is an excellent hitter. Let's just put it that way. Plus, he looks exactly like runs. Mike Trout. So, and he looks exactly like Mike. Let's Trout. get to the okay. Let's just cut the, the the crap. This is about the Angels wanting to deceive fans. If Mike Trout has to miss serious time, they're going to trot <laughs> Renfro out in the the Mike Trout jersey, and no exactly. one will ever know. They'll be like, "Oh, Mike Trout not playing as well today, but he's still out there." We've all heard the of the hidden ball trick, right? Well, what about the <laughs> hidden trout trick? Hey, you're you're up That's there the throwing tr- Renfro. <laughs> That's a trick. When I was a kid, it was when you went to fishing with your dad, and he had a, a secret trout that he bought from the store to put on your fishing line to make you think you were a fishing genius. <laughs> That's how you get your kid to keep going fishing with you. That's a good trick. 
I go. like that. I like it. Okay, so let's Back talk the Brewers. <laughs> let's let's talk the Brewers a little bit. Um, again, I think when you look at the market value of what Renfro received it's right on par with what the blue jays got back for teoscar hernandez except the blue jays got a high-end reliever these are all kind of lottery ticket pitchers when it comes to what the brewers are doing and i mean the brewers are highly known for being able to go through uh opposing teams minor league system and pinpoint some gems okay they they kind of did that with rowdy telez with the blue jays right he Went till Milwaukee just last year. I think he hit 35 bombs and was their everyday first baseman, right? Yep. So not a bad little trade for the Brewers. And then if you look at what's going on, $11 million shaved off with, with getting rid of Renfro. Okay, so Renfro had $6.5 million on the books plus a $4.5 million bonus that was owed to him at the beginning of this 2023 season. So that kind of bumped his salary mm-hmm. up past what it says on spot track, but it is right around that $11 million range. Okay. You look at Josh Hader, some serious bucks being shed there on top of the fact that he's a free agent in a couple of years and they probably aren't going to be able to, to sign him back up anyways. Okay. So we bring all of this up. I know this is a blue Jays focused podcast and we just talked a lot of brewers and angels, but I swear (laughs) there's a point blue Jays fans. All right. (laughs) And that point is, wow, do the Milwaukee Brewers ever look like a beautiful trade partner for the Toronto Blue Jays, especially when you, especially when you look at pitching, right? Because they've got some studs in that starting rotation. Corbin Burns, of course, is the glowing, shining star we all dream about. But Freddie Peralta is a heck of a pitcher as well. He has developed over the last couple of years into a possible ace as well. Like, and the Brewers are really good at developing starting pitching, and they do it a little differently in that they kind of start them in the bullpen, give them more innings. I mean, even Peralta, I know he had some injury problems this year, but I think he only pitched like 78 innings over 18 games, which broke down to about four and a third innings and outing. Yes. They lean heavy into that new way of, of thinking when it comes to baseball and the bullpen and the way you organize your pitching staff and use your pitching staff still had Freddie Peralta still had a beautiful whip of 1.038 I'll take that all day long Mm -hmm. so uh pretty good little ERA too on him right yeah 358 yeah it uh one of the best ones on our team in our if uh (laughs) just to come over tomorrow he'd be so let's talk the logistics here Okay, because the Milwaukee Brewers have an MO of constantly trying to compete. It's something that I really admire about that organization. In a time in baseball when we have seen so many other teams decide to tank and try to accumulate assets that way, the Brewers have gone about it with a winning mentality. And I I love that in an organization. But they've had to make some tough decisions because they don't have the bankroll that maybe some of these top teams that normally always make the playoffs that are there with the Brewers do. So let's look to start with at Brandon Woodruff's contract. Okay. Okay. So Woodruff was arbitration eligible this last year. He wound up making $6.8 million in 2022. He has two years of control left on his contract. Both years, he should fetch north of uh, of $10 million a season. Arbitration is always a roll of the dice. Maybe he only makes nine and a half million this year and then 13 next. We're going to say it evens out to about 20 to $22 million over the next two years. Then you look at Corbin Burns. And how many years of control does Corbin have left on his contract, buddy? Corbin Burns has two more years as well. He's a free agent in 2025. Estimated to make $12 million this year. And then probably about 15 the year after. So a little bit pricier, but still we're talking both Woodruff and Burns, by the way, are front end of any rotation 
starters. Yep. Freddie Peralta, too, for that matter. Freddie Peralta, though, younger and under more control. Uh, do you mind just taking a quick look at what the years of control on Peralta is? I think it's four, but I don't want to be uh, inaccurate. Looks here. like Freddie Peralta. Ooh, is not a free agent until 2027. So Okay, so five years of control. So if you're the Toronto Blue Jays, these are the three pitchers that you are asking about. I think Peralta is without a doubt the least likely to be moved because he fits far more in with the way the Brewers run their organization. They've got a guy who isn't even arb eligible for another two years with Peralta. So I think the most likely to move is Burns or Woodruff. I think Woodruff probably makes the most sense because Burns is a perennial Cy Young candidate. I'm sorry, just to clarify here with Freddie Peralta, uh, he has bypassed his, they, they bought out his arb years. They bought his arb years out. Right. So he's uh, 3.5 this year, 5.5 next year. Those would have been his ARB years. And then there is a two club options in 2025 and 2026 for $8 million each. So Okay. So again, most likely the Brewers aren't going to move on from Freddie Peralta. No. But boy, oh boy, Woodruff and Burns are such interesting pieces. Now listen. Alejandro Kirk is obviously a stud and it is going to be almost impossible for the Blue Jays to replace his offensive output if they are to move him. Now, he does make the most sense to move, in my opinion, for a few reasons. The value is there. And on top of it, he takes up so much time at DH. And if you do have a guy like George Springer, who is obviously on the decline with the amount of time he can put into the field, you kind of need that DH spot open. And when it's both Kirk and Springer that are constantly needing to, to get their bats into the lineup to use that spot, it gums things up. And yeah. I think this is part of what this Blue Jays front office is trying to do, right? Is, is balance the roster a little bit more. Yeah. Another interesting tidbit here about the Brewers is Colton Wong, their second baseman, who is making $10 million and is a free agent at the end mm -hmm. of the 2023 season. Now, it's not like the Blue Jays need a second baseman, but they could use more versatility within their lineup. Colton Wong is an excellent hitter. And on top of that, he's a lefty bat, which is a profile, obviously, the Blue Jays are after. Now, Santiago Espinal is an incredibly proficient fielder, defensively very strong, was an all-star last year. And on top of that, under control and not make, and he's making league minimum. This, this just fits beautifully into the Brewers universe, right? Yeah. So in this scenario, maybe the Blue Jays can wind up filling a hole with the lefty bat swapping second baseman, taking on more money, and that might be a little bit more desirable for the Brewers to move one of those high-end pitchers. You've really painted a mega deal here, Scott. A little bit of a mega deal. A little bit of a mega deal. Clip it. All right. A <laughs> little bit of a mega deal. I love it. No, I mean, great. it could be it much smaller than this too, right? It could be much smaller than this, and they obviously don't need to address all of their – Areas of need. Look, with you're making a great trade. point, though. Uh, they're clearly moving on. They have top flight pitching available. Mm -hmm. and like you said, and Freddie Peralta, I don't think he's available to us, but he is the next man up for them, right? The yes. We can move on from a Corbin Burns, and we've got a Freddie Peralta to hopefully take that next step forward, right? So, And yeah, they're an maybe. organization, dude, that has confidence in their ability to develop starting pitching. Yeah. Like, you see this, you see this hubris, if you will, from teams like the Brewers and the Rays, where other teams wouldn't move on from starting pitching like these organizations mm -hmm. do, but they're confident in their ability to develop from within. And that is not something every team can speak to. I mean, look at the angels, right? So man, um, would I, would I ever take uh Corbin Burns on this team? 
So if you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> I really do think there is a chance because the pitching is such a. Strength of the Brewers. Yeah. And if you can insert a guy like Alejandro Kirk into that lineup, a guy who's under control till 2028, a dude who has already proven himself as an all-star, as a guy who can handle a pitching staff, as a dude who fits in to any clubhouse, right? Like he has just, he has just been a chameleon in that Blue Jays clubhouse soaking up all of the um, knowledge that is available out there. Like I love Kirky. I, I don't want to give up Kirk, but if we're talking a guy like Burns, guys, that's a no. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, like you said, the fact that they did move on from Josh Hader, one of the best closers in baseball, just last year at the trade deadline. This is a team that is volumes is. Uh, really leaning in a certain direction, right? I don't think you move on from Josh Hader if the plan is to hoard mm -hmm. Corbin Burns, right? So makes sense, man. Makes Even the sense. way the Brewers have set up their contracts is so impressive to me, right? Like if you look at this Renfro contract, right? They gave him, I think it was 15 million over two years. Yep. Backloaded the bonus, right? Yep. Gave them the ability, and I mean, $11 million for Hunter Renfro, 29 home runs last year. Still not a bad price, right? I mean, pretty affordable. You know, so they, go yeah. Ahead. No, I was no, just no, going to say, ahead. I was just going to say it's the, the same approach that the Rays did with Wander Franco, mm -hmm. right? What did they give him for a contract? It was, uh, let me just pull up the numbers here. 11 yeah. year, $182 million. Who ever saw the Rays paying $182 million to anyone? I've never, never in a million years would I have considered that. But then when but then you look you at it, you turn that it's, microscope up a little bit. It's, yeah. Uh, One million last year, two million this year, uh, two million next year. And then even in 2025, when he's 24 years old, it's only eight million. That's mm -hmm. still, I mean, Pretty good for him. And I'd say that's the last year, but like that's probably the year they make the trade midway through that season <laughs> just, because just, wow. Because in yeah. 2026, it's 15 million and then it's 22 million and 25 for the last half of it. Like mm -hmm. something to creative, watch. This creative this Brewers, accounting. This Brewers and Jays match just I love it so much, and I really hope that uh it is an avenue that is pursued, of course. Uh, we need to wait and see. We really appreciate all of you within the walk-off community. This thing continues to grow and become an animal it's, of its own. It's a little bit overwhelming, but honestly, we love talking Blue Jays baseball and all the interaction that you folks are involved with us. Thank you so much. Discord, feel free to join it. That is always free. The show, our, uh, the link is in the show notes. You can follow us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast, on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. And if you are watching on YouTube currently and you're not subscribed, We'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. All the best, everybody. Cheers.